Okay, so I'm not going to talk to you about how the uh, change in enzyme concentration can actually affect the rate of reaction. Um, as you can see here, I've, I've got this rather well, crude representation of an enzyme, sort of this U-shaped thing. And first of all, I'm going to look at the low enzyme concentrations, where I'm going to represent just, just two enzyme molecules to represent that. Um, intermediate enzyme concentrations, that will be represented by four enzyme molecules. And I'm referring on the graph to where it basically plateaus. And at high enzyme concentrations, I'm going to be using six of my random little enzyme units. And this is basically the part where rate of reaction cannot get any faster. So that's obviously the, the flat part of the graph. Okay, and what basically happens is that when you've got, we, obviously we're assuming that the substrate concentration is, is constant. That would be one of our control variables. Um, so I'm going to represent the substrate concentration as four, I'm going to use four little substrate molecules to represent the substrate concentration. Um, and basically what you can see is for the first one, um, although we've got four substrate molecules here, only two of them are going to be able to fit into the active site of the enzyme. Excuse me while I quickly draw out all the other ones. As you can see, for, e for each of my examples, my substrate concentration is staying the same. So it's a control variable. I have four, substrate concentrate, four substrates at each concentration. So anyway, back to the first one. So at the low enzyme concentrations, I've got four substrates, but only two of them can fit into the active site at any one time, leaving me with two substrate molecules which, which can't bind the enzyme at that moment. Okay, and that's low at low concentrations. As we move up in the enzyme concentration, you can see now all four of my substrate molecules could fit into the active site of the enzyme at the same time. That gives me my maximum rate of reaction. Once we get high, so now I've got six molecules being represented of enzyme, my four substrate molecules can fit in, but actually some of my enzyme at any one moment will, will be empty. So the active sites of the enzyme will be empty. And this therefore means that rate is has reached its maximum. It cannot go any faster at this stage. Uh, the only way that obviously we can make that faster at this time is to actually add, add more substrate. And obviously the more substrate you have, clearly again, the more enzyme substrate complexes. But in this example, given a constant substrate concentration, in this case of four, four molecules, as I increase the amount of active sites available, I can increase the rate of reaction at any one moment in time, I'm going to have more enzyme substrate complexes as I increase the concentration of enzyme. Up to a maximum as shown with the blue enzymes, whereby it doesn't matter how much more I increase my enzyme concentration by, I've already reached my maximum rate of reaction and can only increase that with more substrate. Okay, so now I'm going to talk to you about how substrate concentration affects the rate of enzyme control reactions. Um, as you can see, very similar to last time in that I'm using these beautifully drawn little U-shaped objects as my enzyme concentration, which in this case will be our control variable. It's going to be the same each time. And again, I'm, I'm going to use four enzyme molecules to represent my constant enzyme concentration. What's changing this time, of course, is the substrate concentration. Okay, so I'm going to be talking through each one. I've colour coded it, so hopefully it's quite clear, just like the last time. So I'm going to be doing the low substrate concentration first. As you can see here, we've got four active sites, and they they will um, have just just in this case just two substrate molecules available to bind with their active sites, leaving us with two further active sites available, two more enzyme molecules. Okay, so that means that you could increase rate of reaction if you increase the substrate concentration. And this is what exactly what we've done. So on the next side of the diagram, we've increased from two to four this time. So our substrate concentration has gone up. All of our active sites are now occupied. And so we're actually at our maximum rate of reaction. And then finally, we've got our maximum substrate, our high substrate concentration. And as you can see here, at this enzyme concentration, all of the active sites are occupied by some of the substrate, just like the previous example, but we've got these two extra substrate molecules, which cannot bind at that moment. So we're going back to the first one, at the lowest substrate concentration, we've got some of the active sites 
being left empty and therefore you can imagine that as you increase substrate concentration you can increase rate by filling those sites up which leads into the middle one and in red there as you can see all of the active sites are full and this is what you would expect to see just at that maximum point of the graph there the, ma the maximum rate possible and then finally you can see on this last example it doesn't matter how much more substrate you add the rate is constant at this point okay because at, at that moment in time all of the active sites are full it's important to remember it's a bit of a misconception sometimes that can happen is, is people then think that the, the reaction has stopped it hasn't stopped it's just not going any faster okay there aren't enough active sites to get any more enzyme substrate complexes going and so it will just continue going but it will need it will need those active sites to be freed up once the products have been formed to then be reused okay it, you can't just increase substrate concentration to increase rate anymore okay so now i'm going to talk to you about um how inhibitors work firstly i'm going to talk to you about something called a competitive inhibitor now enzymes are as you well know special shapes which means that the substrate fits perfectly into the active site now what can actually happen is you can get substances which are very similar in shape to the substrate but actually they are slightly different and what they can do is oh, that's a bit rubbish but you get the idea here's my enzyme okay this is a competitive inhibitor what it does it's got a similar shape similar shape to the substrate and therefore it can compete for the active site as our substrate okay so as you can imagine the more the more inhibitor there is the slower the rate of reaction because it will be it will be out competing the substrate molecules right there is the faster the reaction because it can actually out compete the inhibitor okay and that's illustrated quite nicely on the next slide